What's up, friends? Dogs, cats, turtles, and hippopotamuses. How's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's doing good. It's a uh, slow, rainy, and pending day. Possible some snow tonight. It's like four degrees overcast. Typical New Brunswick wait five minutes if you don't like the weather kind of day. And uh, yeah, slight change of plans for the weekend. Um, I've been relaxed, playing some video games, some buddies. Man, the new Halo that came out. There's a, a new beta for uh, Halo Infinite. Pretty awesome, pretty wicked. Uh, cannot wait for the release of that game on uh, December 8th. Can't think of a more iconic, hands down, my favorite game. Anyways, a little bit of video game chat. We're into harvest mode today. Fall um, is, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things are being harvested, crops, herbs, <laughs> animals, hunting season, so on and so forth. So uh, myself personally, uh, I have, I grew up hunting and stuff like that, just uh, due to time and, and so on and so forth and commitment issues, just don't have the time and or the commitment to put into a hunting season or into a hunt just yet. Uh, anyways, long story short, my father-in-law puts a, a lot of time into hunting and uh, he did harvest himself a, a, nice, uh, a nice buck. So I'm headed down to um, like Adamsville, New Brunswick, where my uh, grandfather-in-law has uh, has a place and some land, and uh, that's where my father-in-law there got his buck. And there's a hide waiting for me there. So I've never worked with hide um, before, but obviously with fly tying, I use a lot of deer hair. Um, so it's something that I did set out, said I wanted to do, and definitely going to try to do here. Is uh, I'm going to try and uh, flesh this hide and uh, dry it out and preserve it and then you know get it into sections work with it dye it and uh, ultimately use this same buck that my father-in-law harvested to tie all my uh, my buck bugs and my dry flies for salmon fishing pretty cool so this is the start of it my like I said my first time of working um, trying to preserve and cure a uh, deer hide it's gonna be the full hide so I Walty the uh, my grandfather-in-law there he said to me, oh, you cut a couple patches of it off. I said, no, I want the whole hide. So I'm gonna try the whole hide. Uh, I've been doing research throughout the winter or summer, talking to people and so on and so forth. So not exactly a complicated process. I mean, you just gotta put some work into it. So it's gonna take a long time, I think, to get a lot of the meat and the flesh off the inside of that hide. Uh, but that's what I'm gonna focus on and I'm gonna try and get it dried out. So yeah, welcome to the episode. Sit back, relax. Uh, heads up if you don't like this kind of stuff, so maybe you don't want to watch this one, but um, nothing that should be on the channel. It's just, uh, you know, it's a deer hide that I'll be cleaning and trying to preserve. So thanks for watching, folks. Smash the uh, thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe and right up on the, like, right, right there, the notification button. That's a good one for the algorithms. They love it. Uh, throw a comment in here. Um, yeah. Do anything if you want to try and help out the channel. Um, I'm having a blast doing this. I couldn't do this without uh, you folks and your support. Um, the things that we're going to do, the things we're going to improve on. And it's really cool, really funny. Really not funny, really fun. <laughs> All right, folks, here you go.
So, uh, pretty well got the tear hide. Um, well, the deer hide's fleshed. You guys didn't see that. I wasn't sure about the monetization policies and so on and so forth, how the fleshing would affect that. So, anyways, it's long story short, no animal cruelty. So, right now, we're just working with a rug. Anyway, so I've got the rug, or no, we'll just call it a hide. I think I'm gonna be ooh, perfectly fine calling this a hide. So anyways, at this point, the hide is, is fleshed and clean. Um, when I went down to see Walty there, the uh, grandfather-in-law stopped by and I was up for an even bigger project <laughs> than I thought. Probably, Walty was probably white saying, maybe I should just take a small piece. Anyways, me, 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 bought the whole hide. But uh, luckily, uh, one of Walter's um, good friends uh, he actually is a trapper, professional trapper for uh, CN Rail. He had stopped by when I was there and kind of seen the task and the project I was up to. And anyway, so he took me back to his uh, his camp and his place there, and he showed me how to properly um, flesh out these deer hides. And he actually did the whole hide for me. So now the uh, bulk of the hard work is done. Uh, I didn't do any video for it just because, you know, it's, I like to learn and ask a whole bunch of questions. I don't really like shooting video first time I'm hanging out with somebody in, in their place. So anywho, um, had him flesh it for me, did an awesome job. It doesn't look too difficult, you just need the right table and uh, the right kind of tools to do it, which I can do now. And anyways, so it's all cleaned up. Uh, you guys see me spraying it down, just getting the hair uh, as clean as I can. I just used a little bit of um, head and shoulders shampoo to, to get that, uh, all the, uh, the nasty stuff out of the fur and get it nice and soft. So now I need to try to get as much water out of that as possible. And uh, for a good 24 hours or so, I'm just gonna try and dry it up from everything because I just soaked it so much. So I'm gonna try and dry it up over the next 24 hours. And uh, yeah, we'll check it out tomorrow. And uh, maybe even tonight later on, I'm not sure. We'll be applying some um, borax on the back of that and getting this uh, hide prepared to dry and cure for fly time. All right, let's check it out. And I'll do a little bit more couple clips. So here's our hide. We've just got it sitting in some nice lukewarm water. But the first time I rinsed this, the uh, water was very dark red. So now this is how much cleaner we have that fur. I'm pretty happy. I, got, I haven't seen any bugs or nothing in it really. But there's obviously some mites and other stuff that we have to worry about further in the video and down the road. But for now, um, I'm very happy. This is my first hide. I mean, look at the quality of some of that hair. Wow, is there a lot here? So uh, I really lucked out meeting up with uh, buddy there today having him show me how to do this and flush this properly so now I can just focus and put the extra time into cleaning the hair and preparing it and drying it and curing it properly so really cool and uh, I do want to show you the bucktail so uh doing the bucktail it was really soft trying to get a lot of material out of here when we took the bone out um but uh, anywho we didn't get we lost a little bit of the, the tail there but still like this is going to be awesome for uh, tying striped bass flies and even uh, black salmon flies. Like, look how long those are. Look at that. I know somebody that is gonna love to see how long some of these hairs are, not just for striped bass flies, but for musky flies. Uh, pretty cool. I'm really excited with this process. So this is just the beginning of it. This needs a lot of borax on it because this tail is so soft. They're just a little different tool, but uh, Anyways, and there's your head and shoulders. They're good enough for my hair. Good enough for uh, your hair. <laughs> I gotta get cleaned up here a little bit. And we're gonna get that guy hanging and drying uh, in the heater. Cool, folks. Check it back.
Man in the ball racks. <laughs> So I don't know if any of you guys are like me or not, but I always wondered why <laughs> deer hair and fly tying materials and the price that they are, a lot of work. A lot of work going into uh, preparing and prepping this material, but it's pretty fun. Um, kind of right now where I'm at is I've pulled the hide down and I've kind of cut it up into sections. Don't know if I sectioned it up right. Um, I'm not really gonna know when I start working with it and getting into it. There's basically a lot of material on here, your bucktail, a lot longer hairs, not as good for spinning bugs. Uh, a little bit coarser hair is better for spinning bombers. And then some of that softer belly hair, and I, I'm gonna say shoulder and the neck hair, um, really seems like that nice, shorter, softer hair that's gonna be good for the bugs. So anyways, I tried to cut it up and section it up as best I could. Tried with a uh, knife. No, don't do knife. <laughs> nice sharp blade and you gotta get in and try and kind of part the hair. And if you can get the knife pulling in, nice and, and, and smoothly. Um, I find I wasn't, there's some points I was making nice big cuts there, especially when I had it hanging, I wasn't cutting any hair, I was just cutting the hide, and then there's some other spots where I made cuts and 
wasted some hair, which isn't good to see, but uh, still a lot of material to work with. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking nails. Oh, here, let me flip this around. So as you guys can see, I'm taking nails and what I'm doing is just tacking them in and stretching out this hide. And then I'm pulling it up to the end of the head of the nails so that when I get this board back up and hanging, there's still gonna be airflow coming in behind and then obviously put a whole bunch more borax on there, which I'll keep applying and keep using um, throughout the next couple of weeks. So these are how they're gonna hang and cure um, for the next little while. I, I hung the way I did last night uh, just to make sure that I got all the fur dry because I did such a heavy wash and cleaning on it yesterday um, and disinfecting, trying to get as many bugs and stuff like that killed. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure how long I need to hang, but um, yeah, a couple weeks at least. I'm pretty sure it's a bit of almost four weeks to need to hang to cure like this in a nice warm environment with good airflow on it. So these are some of the smaller sections. That's the big, big piece, you know, big board. Um, and then bucktail's still up there. I gotta get that down. And yeah, it's more. So I think I stretched out. I'm just layering on the borax at this point because and it's good that I cut this up because you can see like some of that stuff right here. I'm gonna stretch this out so you don't get that junk. I don't have my tripod here, but you're getting all these crinkles and stuff like that, so you're gonna get a lot of hair in there. You can use them to do some of this stuff. Beautiful for bugs. Some nice, nice stuff from the sides, from the belly right there. I'm really liking this stuff. This is the stuff that came off the, uh, the shoulders this stuff beautiful looking there's a lot of material here so I know the wife doesn't like the smell in here <laughs> but uh, it's kind of cool I know it smells getting a little bit better so at least it smells like bald axe not dead animal anymore <laughs> and um, just so you guys know too just in case like I'm not traveling anymore but yesterday when I grabbed this hide um, it was already butchered and recorded in sections so I actually took the tag with me I didn't grab my hunting license this year, so in any case I got pulled over for a speeding ticket or ran into a ride program or rangers or whatever, you want to keep that tag with this hide, is what I was told. Um, so anyways, I'm really curious, I do have a tag here somewhere. Like I said, my father-in-law got this uh, buck this year. Hey, what's up wife? Um, lunch is ready. Ooh, lunch is ready. Alright. What are you doing, Rex? Morning, day three. Still working on the uh, HUD. Rex and his mom had to uh, head out to the vet. I gotta work in an hour or two. So me and Novi are home. Oh. Home alone, me and Nova. What do you think, Novi? Can you go, girl? What are you doing? This is Nova, I don't know. You guys seen, you've seen her around a little bit. She, uh, we got her when she was a year and a half old. She's uh, almost, she's two and a half years old now. So we got her for a year and a half. 
And um, she was a rescue. She, uh, she's doing fair right now. She's, she's getting her first Oh, no, she's here. That's a high camera. She's very upset that her mom and racks are gone right now. <laughs> Nova, come here. Come here. Where are you going? There's a lot of weird spells in here. All right, let's check out the hide. All right, so a day, what is it, three? I uh, did keep the heat on last night. It's That thing is like a 220 volt <laughs> uh, heater. It just, I don't even want to imagine what it costs to run that thing. So anyways, I turned that off. I've just got the fan on it. Um, you know, it's, it's warm enough in here. It's probably 20 degrees filling the garage. It's not that cold out. So um, actually zero degrees and snowing. Shouldn't say that, but anyways. Um, if I need to add some heat in here throughout the day, I will. If I need to put a space heater on it, I will. But I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. It's really dry right now. Um, I've got a lot of borax sitting on the, the big piece here. Uh, I might get some of that off later on. Smaller pieces um, are really drying out. I might tack them a little bit more. They're doing awesome. Same with these smaller pieces. Doing really good. And then some of the nice bigger Nicer strips in here. Again, everything's doing really good. So I think I'll cap the video here. Um, it's pretty well it. I mean, that's three days of kind of working and staying on top of this. Um, I think that's you know good enough for content for the video. Uh, basically, from here on out, I think this is just going to basically sit here and cure like this um, for the next two or three weeks. And then um, I'll get it, you know, probably put it in the freezer, maybe. Yeah, next two or three weeks, I'll probably probably cure it for two or three weeks. And then I'm probably going to put this all this stuff in the freezer um, just to try and kill any bugs that may be left in there. And I might need to look into a solution that kills the mites. Uh, but other than that, I just got to store it and store it with some mothballs to make sure bugs and insects and stuff like that don't get into it. But other than that, it's just the mites. Uh, and the little bugs that I'm concerned with, I gotta make sure that they get killed. Um, I think there's a solution that you can use, but I know obviously putting your stuff in the freezer is, is gonna kill that stuff off anyway. So, um, not sure of the plan yet, but eh, I'll figure it out. Anyways, folks, thanks for tuning in. Um, different kind of episode, but this ultimately, all this deer hair and all this fur um, from my, my father-in-law's harvested buck this year is uh, going from my fly tying more of this material that I can gather. Um, you know, bugs and bombers, I, what I enjoy tying and is what I put the most amount of time into. And that's what I fish. So deer hair is bugs and bombers. I'm gonna order um, some dye from uh, vineyards. Vineyards, vineyards, anyways, however you say it. Uh, I'm gonna order some dye from them, some of my favorite colors, and I'm gonna get to dye in, um, you know, a couple weeks when this stuff is cured and ready to go. And I'm preparing all of my own deer hair for this season, so pretty cool, pretty excited. Um, something I've always wanted to do. I love the idea of being able to do everything full picture on your own, and uh, this is where it all starts. I think I'm gonna maybe almost, I don't know. I kinda wanna try and grab another hide. I'm definitely looking for another couple of bucktails. Um, so I got some calls out for that, but yeah. Anyways, folks, I'll stop rambling on here. Enough of that. Uh, thanks for tuning into this episode. Uh, please, if uh, you enjoyed the content, and uh, if you like seeing more cute little Novi, like and subscribe. Uh, toss a comment in there and somewhere over there, corner, hit that notification button. Um, weekly episodes coming out. And uh, yeah, that's about it, folks. All right, thanks for tuning in. We will see you on the next episode.